first of uh, two sessions that we're going to organise this year around uh, stakeholders, partners, connected with ICSs. Uh, we're looking at the whole idea of this seminar for the next few hours is to look at research. We've got a number of people presenting their research work on health inequalities and how that research work can inform us around better thinking, uh, better delivery around our work, around tackling health inequalities. Uh, we've got a number of ICSs um, here this afternoon, which is really fantastic. Um, I know there's quite, quite a few people here um, looking at the gallery, so it's really great. We've had quite a few apologies for people who can't make it as well, but we've got a good number of people. We've got an action-packed agenda. Um, my partner in crime is Chris. So let me say anything, Chris, uh, before I start my intro. Um, uh, do you want to introduce yourself, Chris? Yeah, so uh, thank you, Patrick. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Chris Weiner. Uh, I'm currently the uh, Senior Responsible Officer for uh, uh, Health and Equalities in NHS EI in the Midlands. Um, although I'll be joining some of you who are online today in uh, in Derby and Derbyshire in the near future and, and handing over my role to somebody else. But uh, good afternoon anyway from, from NHS EI. Okay. Thank you very much, Chris. And uh, I'm Patrick Vernon. I'm non-exec director at Birmingham and Solid Health ICS, where I'm the board lead for inequalities. I also uh, chair Walsall Health Partnership, which is also in the Black Country ICS. Um, obviously, as from the 1st of July, we will go live uh, as ICS systems in terms of our clear remit, in terms of particularly the ICB, in terms of our function, and then later on the work that we have to do as a wide the ICS and this seminar is really helping us do our thinking around that as well. I don't know if you saw over the weekend um, a league table was produced highlighting ICS, all the ICSs around the country around the challenges they face around uh, their work around inequality and, and, and uh, deprivation and in our region the West Midlands uh, uh, Birmingham Solid Hall was number one the Black Country was number two so really, uh, we've got some big challenges ahead of us as stakeholders and partners. We know that good quality research, data is important. Um, particularly in Birmingham Solid Hall, we are lucky to have um, really great support from public health teams, both from Birmingham Solid Hall. Obviously, our, our, the whole various providers that we have uh, in the system as well, as well as information and intel from community groups, third sector organisations and service users and patients themselves. As ICS, like all ICSs, we have to produce a health inequality strategy and I'm working with a whole range of colleagues in the system to produce a health inequality strategy uh, for Birmingham Solid Hall. Um, the funny thing about my appointment, I was the first NED in the country to be appointed uh, in the system, uh, apart from chairs obviously, and um, and really, I'm, the, I'm, I'm probably there's only very few people who've got, who've been given this title in their job description as NEDs around leading on inequalities. Um, so we're almost like a, a, a unique species, or uh, in terms of that leadership role, that system leadership role. But I've been very clear from my colleagues, definitely in Birmingham Solid Hall, that health, tackling health inequalities is a shared responsi responsibility, it's shared leadership, and we need to work together, even though we'll have formal mechanisms around reporting on our delivery and our performance around tackling health inequalities, it has to be a clear system responsibility for all of us um, as well. One of the key things that we've been trying to do in Birmingham and Solihull, which is not different to any other ICS, is trying to work out what our key our key priorities are uh, in around tackling health inequalities. And we've already identified some five key priorities already uh, for Birmingham Solid Hall, which may be no different to some of your thinking uh, where you are in terms of your ICSs, re recognising that we need to reduce infant mortality, uh, particularly in the most deprived, diverse communities. Uh, we, we also, and also recently, uh, Birmingham in partnership with Lucian Council, have launched the Blackie Report, which has identified key issues around health inequalities for the African Caribbean community. Infant mortality is one of those key issues. That's particularly around issues around maternal death, um, which and the whole campaign called Five No More. So we recognise that that's a big issue. We also recognise as a second area that we've identified is improving prevention uh, and early detection around the treatment of uh, coronary heart disease, um, 
as well. We also recognise there's a big issue around diabetes and COPD, which is no different for all the strategies and plans that we know. But it's a big issue for all our ICSs. Improving mental and physical health, we recognise that's, that's quite important for people. Ensuring that children from deprived communities have that good start in life, we all recognise that. So these are, uh, and our fifth priority is really about uh, improving outcomes for people with learning disabilities. So these are kind of our emerging priorities that we've identified through conversation with providers, stakeholders, and research as well. We also, on top of that, got about three other what we call um, service provider priorities. We recognise in terms of what we need to do, particularly around how we design and deliver services, such as working with communities, primary care, the voluntary sector. And I'm, I think we're very lucky in a place like Birmingham that we've got a fantastic primary care network. We've got some committed GPs who are going over and above their normal day job as clinicians to try and make links with um, the community, engage with patient groups as well. And I think this is going to be really important. Around, that's going to make a difference, personally speaking, if we're going to really tackle the health and equality agenda uh, as well. We also recognise, because of the challenges, because of the impact of COVID-19, there is a massive backlog through elective care, a whole range of um, tertiary activities that we need to deliver. And one of the chief challenges, I think, facing ICSs, um, you know, is obviously we have to do regular reporting to the region, which goes straight to number 10. And my challenge, my fear is how much of our time will be sucked into reporting and feeding the beast, not given the space that we need to tackle some of the key issues without the heavy hand of number 10 reminds ever so often. This is a real challenge, I think, for the ICSs. Yes, we have to do stuff around performance management and delivery, but how can we also do something innovative and creative? The more data that we have, the better intel that we have, that will help us to make the business case around some of the major service transformation changes that we need to do, and also look at new ways of investing around health and inequalities um, as well. I mean, so these are some of the key issues and challenges that we're facing. I mean, in an ideal world, and maybe some of you would agree with me, that if we could even change the formula, the, the formula for how we um, do allocations based on health and qualities, that would be a good thing because off conversely it's based on population. Uh, and although we are we are developing population and health perspective uh, as an ICS, I think the way the, the, the funding formula works it works against places like Birmingham and Solihull Hall because it doesn't really recognise the true issues around inequalities, the impact of structural racism and black and brown bodies, and some of the big challenges that we face in a major urban conurbation area um, uh, as well. So these are some of the things which we're doing. I'm sure as we start the conversation, you will share some of your ideas, your different perspectives as well. I mentioned also I'm a chair of Warsaw Together, and Warsaw Together is in the Black Country ICS, and Warsaw Together has been quite successful in doing some great work around hospital discharge, working closely with social care, um, the hospital trusts, and, and the wider community as well. And I think one of the key issues that we need to look at is about system leadership. What does system, is system leadership look like uh, around tackling health inequalities? I know there's lots of um, conversations, there's lots of networks out there, but from the West Midlands perspective, it'd be really great if we collectively had some key principles and some values around system leadership, around tackling health inequalities. Maybe that it might come out of these conversations, who knows? 